Morning, this is uh, the second time uh, for my talk on the Diamond Sutra. This is a sutra that we are talking about, the Diamond Sutra. And the last time we spent about 45 minutes in the introduction of the sutra, um, the importance of the sutra, uh, why are we always studying this sutra, and the, um, the significance of it. Um, now most, and, and uh, I remember in the last few minutes before we left last time, we were talking about the translations of this sutra. Um, we're talking about Western scholars, such as Edward Kahn's, who translated the Diamond Sutra from Sanskrit into English. For those first-time commoners, you may not know what Sanskrit is. Sanskrit is the classical Indian language at the time of the Buddha in India. And sutras were translated from Sanskrit, mostly into Chinese, but since about 150 years ago, and uh, many Western scholars attempted to translate from Sanskrit into English. So one of the most famous ones Western scholars, Edward Kahn's, he spent his whole life in studying Sanskrit, Chinese, and translated uh, quite a few sutras from Sanskrit into English. Um, now there's also an internationally famous Buddhist scholar by the name Max Muller, a German professor, uh, expert in Sanskrit and Chinese. He also translated the Diamond Sutra. This is the, the Diamond Sutra is what we're talking about, just for, for those who don't know. This is the Diamond Sutra, one of the most important sutras in the Mahayana uh, Buddhism. Not just in the Mahayana, also in the Hinayana too. Um, Hinayana or Theravada also study uh, this sutra. Uh, there's also a professor, Eugene, Eugene uh, Brenov and Samuel Beale, um, again, Sanskrit scholars in the last century, also had some translations. So you can actually look for them in the internet. These scholars are the ones who translated the Diamond Sutra direct from Sanskrit into English. Um, if you are taking an academic approach into the study of Buddhism, that's how you should do it. And there are also a few scholars who translated the Diamond Sutra from Chinese into English. Now that's a second-handed translation because the Chinese translated from Sanskrit into Chinese and some Western scholars, they, they, they're expert in, in Chinese and they translate from Chinese into English. Uh, these are the second-hand translations. Um, for example, um, there's a Mr. A.F. Professor, Professor, uh, Mr. I don't remember, Price, uh, who worked with uh, Mr. Wang Mo Lam uh, together, translated, translated the Diamond Sutra. So that's all for the academic part of it, the bibliography of it. Um, let's get into uh, some of the content of it. The Diamond Sutra, the full name of the Diamond Sutra in the Sanskrit language is Vajra Chattika Prajna Paramitta Sutra. And there's the word Prajna in there, which is very important. P R A J N A, Prajna. That word is a Sanskrit word. And um, the understanding of Prajna is extremely important in Buddhism. This sutra, the Diamond Sutra, summarizes the, the, the profundity of Prajna. Buddha Sakamuni gave 16 great congregations to teach the prajna. We, we mentioned it last time. 2,600 years ago, Buddha Sakamuni in India, he gave 16 congregations um, to teach prajna. Most of the content 
um, of the 16 congregations uh, main, es the main essence of the talk is contained in a sutra called uh, Maha Prajna Sutra. A Maha Prajna Sutra. There's another sutra which is called Maha Prajna Sutra. Maha means great. Many people know about that. It's almost like a, a term borrowed from Sanskrit and used commonly in English. Maha means, means uh, great. Maharajna means king, the great king, Maha. So, Maha Prajna Sutra, um, it's the most um, voluminous of all sutras in explaining Prajna. And this sutra, it's in, in Chinese. It contains 600 volumes translated by Xuan Zhang, as I have said before. Xuan Zhang, the, one of the, the, the monk in 1,000, about 1,100 years ago in the Tang Dynasty, there was a monk in, in China in the Tang Dynasty, um, vener, the most venerable Xuan Zhang, Yun Zhong Dai Xi, Xuan Zhang Fa Si, as I have said before. It was translated by him together with a team of translators. 600 volumes, that team spent three years in translating it. So, translation is a very um, strenuous work, uh, especially from one language to another. Uh, the Diamond Sutra is a summary of this Mahaprajna Sutra. So, if you think that, oh, studying this Mahaprajna Sutra, 600 volumes, would take me a long time, just the translation is three years, so if I study it in Chinese, given that if your Chinese is good enough, uh, you study in Chinese, uh, 600 volumes, a lot of characters, millions of characters, a lot of time must be spent to study it. And if you think that, I just want to grasp a general outline of it, a summarization of it, then you study the Diamond Sutra. This Diamond Sutra is a summary, is an outline of the 600 volumes Mahaprajna Sutra. So that's why this is important. And the Di this Diamond Sutra, it, in Chinese, it's not very long, 5,800 characters, Chinese characters. In the English language, I don't know, it's easily, um, it's easily defined by clicking at, 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 a, at a computer to get the total number of words. Not that long, not that long. The translation is not that long. It's easier to grasp and easier to finish in terms of studying time and efforts. So for, for students of philosophy, for students of studying uh, culture, for students studying religion, or for students who, who want to know something about Buddhism, this is a sutra to look for, the Diamond Sutra. And uh, I know there's a book, there, there has been a book for a number of years out there, written by, written by a Rinpoche, a monk. Um, it's called a diamond cutter, I think. And he, um, he was a monk before, and he, he gave up his, his robe and returned to laity for a number of years and uh, got involved in the diamond, in, in the jewelry business. And he um, practiced diamond sutra, and he uh, utilize what he learned from this sutra to run his business, to operate his business, his jewelry business, and he became a billionaire. <laughs> and he wrote a book about how he applied the diamond sutra to his business. Became a billionaire in, in the jewelry business. Is that called a diamond cutter? It is. It is, yes. And he, uh, he gave it all back up and took his robes back on and returned to being a monk. Yeah, he gave his money all to charity later and returned to become a monk. I think just out of curiosity, he just wanted to make sure that people know this is useful. <laughs> you make billions of dollars from it. So, if you're in business, this is the way to go. <laughs> okay. So, um, Diamond Sutra. Um, the Zen set, the set of Buddhism, 
Zen, Zen Zen is meditation. Zen is a Japanese word. Zen Yen is it, the Sanskrit word for it is Dhyana, D H Y A N A, and uh, in the Chinese language is Chan. Uh, they are all the same. It's just different names, and um, the Zen, the, the Chan set sect of Buddhism, regards this book as one of the most is the most important for the practice of meditation. And uh, um, so, meditators, we need to know it, the Diamond Sutra. Bodhisattvas practice the six Prajna Paramitras, going towards the path of enlightenment. And the six Prajna Paramitras, you remember the six Prajna Paramitras? Liu Du Po Lo Mi. Liu Du Po Lo Mi. The six Prajna Paramitras outline the practice of Bodhisattvas. What are these six parts of the parameters? The first one is generosity or giving. Generosity or giving. You know. The practice of giving. The second one is ethics. The practice of morality. The practice of, of precepts. And the, the third one is patience. The practice of tolerance. The fourth is efforts. The practice of diligence. The fifth is concentration. The practice of meditation. The sixth is wisdom, the cultivation of wisdom. So you need these six, these six parameters are practiced by bodhisattvas on their way to get enlightenment, on their way to get nirvana. To cultivate wisdom, you need this diamond sutra. You need the prajna sutra. This is, this is a sutra in the prajna classification category. So just a few more words on the, uh, the six parameters. When, when I come to think of it, um, just two years ago I gave a lecture to a group of 16 professors, all from China, from Beijing University, from, from Tsinghua University, from uh, the north, the south, the 16 professors, all coming to, uh, to Simon Fraser Universities. Uh, in-house program for a month in the management course. And somehow they came to the temple and, and uh, they, they called up and they said the, he wanted to listen to um, a lecture given by... Um, and they heard about me giving some lectures before, so they wanted to visit it and they want us to organize a day for them so that they can learn something. So I organized a day of lecture uh, and I broke it down into two parts. It's like here, the first part is just meditation. The second part is lecturing, it's giving talk. 